I don't have a cool intro to go here, but I do have some answers. Play epic sound. Bum, bum. I want to start with the box through the wall trick because I get a lot of questions about it. The first question is, does it still work? Yes. Yes it does. Now it does have to be done in a very specific order, which I may have failed to demonstrate properly in videos that use it, so I will rectify this now. If you place the roof and don't get the hole in the wall, make sure that you destroy this wall first and it should work. Now once you do have the hole, you still cannot just place a box through it. As a matter of fact, this is about as good as you can place it right now. The trick here is to upgrade this roof to at least wood or any of the other material grades first. Once you do that, the box can be placed very easily like this and you even have wiggle room horizontally. To complete the trick, simply break the slanted roof. You see, it still works. If you wish to have two boxes through the wall, just repeat the same steps but change the direction of the slanted roof at the start. Remember to break the side wall and upgrade the roof. Grab yourself a second box and place it in the hole. When I place these, I do like to have them both as close to the roof as possible. This keeps them nice and centered in the room. A lot of people have asked me how does this actually work and how do I get the loot in and out of the TC room once it's sealed off. Allow me to explain. For everything to fit, you need to place the TC in a corner facing this way. This will allow you to place a sleeping bag right next to it. The sleeping bag is key in making this trick work. From the outside, you can pass as much loot through the boxes as you want. Once the loot is in, you can hit the F1 key, click on console, and use the kill command to respawn. Choose the sleeping bag you place inside the room, which will spawn you right here. Once inside, you can now grab all of the loot from the boxes and put them into the TC for upkeep, or into the boxes you should place down on the floor here. This is kind of the same as using a Dropbox, but this technique has way more throughput and does not require the Dropbox BP, which makes me happy. Now this room should be deep within your base design, but what happens if the box does get broken? Well, in that case, the remedy is to use Dropboxes, one in and one out. This is a very strong trick to use as long as there is a strong base design that supports it. <clears throat> the next thing I'd like to discuss is my double bunker concept, specifically the entrance. In the video it's laid out like this, which depends on being able to bury this stash, but there's a much better way to do it. We'll get rid of the sleeping bag and box, this half wall as well. Now if we grab a sleeping bag and flip it around twice, we can place it here instead. This has to be in a very specific orientation, the goal is to have it where you can still place this half wall. Make sure you replace this bit here and upgrade it to armored. Now, crawling through the first bunker we can access the box through the wall trick. Here we can store a tool to soft side pick the stability bunker when we come back online. The idea for the stability bunker is to place a half wall with hard side facing the opening. Upgrade this to wood to prevent any splash damage from destroying the twig. Once it looks like this, we can seal it up on top. This should be done with HQM and once it's closed, will cost two HQM walls worth of raid cost when upgraded to the max. To open the bunker, you use the F1 console and the kill command to respawn on the inside bag right here. From here, we can grab the tool from the box and soft side pick this wood. This will open the bunker. This is a much easier and much better solution than the one I used in the video. If you're interested in seeing this thing in action, I have used this core design in my small but strong base design. Link in the description below. Now welcome to the meta. Bunkers. Let's go ahead and break these down. So the first thing to note is that a floor tile does not attach to any raised foundation. However, they do attach to the top of half walls like this, and you can upgrade this to whatever you like. Since this half wall is the only thing holding up this floor triangle, breaking it will delete the triangle as well. Now it's also important to note that this stone half wall is not being held up by this twig one. If I build the same thing as before and demolish the bottom one, the stone one remains. This is because it's actually being held up by this full wall here. Now we can take all that we've just learned and implement it into a basic design. If we put the same half wall and triangle here, in between two raised foundations, we have a stability bunker, which we just sealed. One way to reveal the entrance is the lowest stability number compared to the foundations next to it. When sealed, the only thing a radio can see is stone, but from our inside point of view, we still see a twig half wall, which we can break easily from here, opening the bunker. Now there is just a little bit more to this. When you build this half wall, you always want the hard side to face the opening, and you always want to upgrade it to wood. This is because there is a way to splash damage the twig sometimes through this 90 degree angle. This is very rare and not reproducible by any means, but it is worth the wood upgrade. Since we have wood here instead of twig, we will now need to use a tool to break it. Pretty much anything that cuts wood works great here, and then we are back on the outside. As stone, this is already decently strong, but this trick can be absolutely OP, and that's because you can build it out of any of the in-game materials. Now the first two are kinda bad, since twig and wood are overall weak compared to the rest, plus the high foundations are transparent, so we'll skip them, and just focus on the stone grade and up. With our wood half wall in place, building this entire bunker out of stone is four rockets to raid from all directions. 
Sequentially, using all sheet metal like this will cause 8 rockets to raid from all directions. And finally, using high quality metal to armor the entire bunker will cause 16 rockets to raid. This one here is the big boy. You will find something similar to this bunker in most modern base designs. But remember, no matter what it's built out of, when you spawn inside it, there's only a soft side wood wall to pick to open it. Now this building technique is extremely strong, but let's not pretend it doesn't have a weakness, okay? Okay. I'm standing on it right now. That would be Exhibit A and Exhibit B. The high foundations here are considered soft side from the top, which means you can soft side pick them with tools. This can technically be done with a pickaxe, but the real threat is this baby here, the jackhammer. Soft siding anything does take time, but to myself, this is what I consider free raid cost, as it doesn't use any sulfur, so how can we fix this? So the way I approach this is simple. You have to make the raid cost to get to the foundations, the same as the raid cost to get in your bunker through the walls. This has to be done from all directions and depends on which material your bunker is made of. So in this example, stone costs about 4 rockets to raid, so we need to add about 4 rockets of pathing to get to these points. By adding walls of the same building material to the edge of the foundations, and adding a roof, we can maintain 4 rocket raid costs from all angles except one, the entrance. Here we must decide what to use, a single door, a wall frame, even a window can work sometimes. This step is pretty simple. Most of the work is already done, but now is where it starts to get tricky. What combination of doors should we use? Well the answer is, that's a hard question. There are so many combinations you could use, it would be impossible to demonstrate them all, so here's what I'll do. I'm going to tell you the guidelines that I follow when trying to do this. Number 1. Raid costs through the doors equal to the cost of going through the walls. Now this will never be perfect, but keeping it as close to equal is what actually matters. No point in adding this many doors if it's 4 rockets to go through this way. On the other end of the spectrum, it doesn't make sense to do something like this because look how cheap this route is in comparison to here. Doing this efficiently with higher building grades, especially with adding on honeycomb, gets to be really tough and is pretty much the entire art of base design. Finding the best combinations will only come with lots of experience and practice, so get building. Number 2. Most efficient is not always the best. What I mean by this is check out this little base design here. Since we have a garage door here, which is already similar in raid cost to all of these walls, it kind of negates the need for these sheet metal doors. This is because if you were raiding through the door path here, it would cost you more sulfur than if you just went through these walls. So this is an inefficient design, right? Well, in my opinion, the addition of this room is very valuable. I mean, look at everything that is in this room. A workbench with two small boxes under it, an additional large box and small box on the floor, two sleeping bags, and just more space to move around in. With this second room here, we gain a bit more storage, a front door airlock, and also the ability to look outside through the shop front. In my mind, all of these gains far outweigh the exact pathing rate cost, being a bit extra. When thinking about how to do this in your own builds, make sure that you consider shortcuts raiders can take, which are worth it. An example here would be being able to hit both of these foundations from the outside, giving raiders the bunker entrance and everything in this room for the cost of just raiding the bunker. This is why I had to upgrade this triangle to sheet metal. Now they have to go through the other side. Now don't take this base verbatim, it's only an example to demonstrate the point. So a couple of things I want to go over real quick. So I figured I'd try something a little bit new here. I'm going to finish this video with a QA. and a I'm going to try to cover the questions I get asked the most. So the first one is, do I have a Discord? So I get asked a lot if I have a Discord that people can join. At the moment, I don't. And this will change soon. Honestly, I have to learn how to properly set one up. I really want the Discord to be a great experience, so I won't release it until it's finished. I am currently working on it though. The second question is about Patreon. This is something I am currently looking into as well. I have this kind of New Year's resolution to roll out some of these things. I do want to say that there has been many requests for this, which is to my total surprise. It's a bit hard to put into words, but the growth of the channel has been so amazing and so beyond anything I would have expected. To be honest, I fell a bit behind with things that a proper YouTuber has in place. This will change. The third question is, do I live stream? So like everyone else, I do have a Twitch account. Of course, I watch all of the content creators for Rust. Now, as far as going live on Twitch or live on YouTube, I am curious if this is something you would want. I would find it awesome to connect with you all in this way. So let me know in the comments below if this would be something you would want me to try. What do you use to record slash edit your videos? So 
for raw gameplay footage, I use OBS Studio. I like the studio version because I have full control over the output. Things like bitrate, recording multiple audio tracks, color format. I can change my color space to 709 if I need to. I can use a full color range over partial if it's needed. It's just an overall great program for this. For editing, I use two programs. The first is Premiere Pro. I use this for basic cutting and editing timelines with raw footage libraries and things like that. The second program I use is DaVinci Resolve. Version 16 is current at this time. I use this for advanced color grading when it's needed. It has a great color grading UI which comes very natural to me. I also template custom video transitions in Fusion and any green screen work with 3 or 5 point lighting works great within Resolve. Fairlight Audio also allows me to use stuff like DSers, audio effects, and anything really that needs to be done in post. I do most of my post processing effects within Resolve. And what about the accent? Brooklyn, New York.